Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about how you can purchase responsible fine jewellery for less as well as some of my tips for styling fine jewellery because that's kind of what I tend to reach for day to day. Now today's video is in partnership with Linya which if you've been following me for a while then you will know it is one of my go-to brands and I'm so proud to be able to partner with Linya because this video coincides with the launch of their new diamond collection with lab grown diamonds which are conflict free. So more on that in a moment. I think one of the things I really love about Linnea as a brand is the fact that all of their products are made to last. They're created using really high quality materials not just for their jewelry but for their leather goods as well and all of the designs are really timeless so they're the type of thing that you could add to your wardrobe today and it's not going to look or feel dated 10, 20, 30 years from now which is sort of something that I try and look for when I'm adding anything to my closet in general. And I think we all know that diamonds come with a pretty high price point which is why lab grown diamonds are such a great alternative. Aside from the fact that they're not mined they are also much more accessible from a pricing perspective and physically, chemically and optically are exactly the same as mined diamonds. So this new collection from Linnea which features these beautiful lab grown diamonds costs a fraction of what a luxury brand would charge. For example Tiffany's would charge around $3,400 for a gold diamond eternity band whereas linears will cost less than a third than that so you can really see that you're getting incredible value for money without skimping on the quality. All of the pieces in this new collection from Linear are set in 14 karat gold which I really love because it has this beautiful creamy color to it but not only that it's recycled gold which means that you're essentially saving a waste raw material from being put into landfill which is fantastic and that is going to be one of my tips when I talk about the materials to look out for when uh, looking for responsible fine jewelry. Now I am wearing a couple of the pieces on my finger today. I have on the Miriam ring which is this really beautiful simple gold band with some small diamonds set across the center and I've stacked it with the Elsa Ring Lux, which is actually one of my favorites. In general, I have it in the Citroen and it is kind of one of my go-tos. I generally tend to wear it on my left index finger. And there are some other really gorgeous pieces in the range. I'm gonna share with you all of them. So we have the Anya Ring, which is a really, really fine, uh, gold band which has a simple diamond with a gold setting around it and that's a really lovely smaller piece. There is the gold diamond eternity band which is again it's a really beautiful thin band and it has diamonds the entire way around and just very very sparkly. I think this is a really beautiful option if you wanted to add an eternity band to your wedding ring stack or alternatively I think it looks beautiful worn on its own as well or even stacked with other jewelry pieces. The final ring in the collection is the diamond solitaire ring which is exactly what you would expect it to be. It is a really beautiful band which actually is thinner uh, where the diamond setting is and then it's slightly thicker towards the base and then you have that beautiful uh, solitaire diamond in the center. And then there's also a pair of earrings in the collection as well and these are called the Linear Diamond Studs and they are sterling silver. These are recycled silver actually and then they have that beautiful diamond in the center. Just a really good classic everyday type of a piece, one that uh, I think would work really well especially if you're wearing louder outfits as well which is going to be a tip that I share with you a little bit later on. So that is a little look at Linnea's new lab grown diamond collection. I'm going to have a link down in the description box below if you would like to go and check out the full range for yourself. I have to say every single piece is just absolutely exquisite. I love the fact that they are much kind of finer daintier pieces so they're not going to compete with any of the other jewelry that I'm wearing but they're going to add that really beautiful sparkle and I feel like these would make a really beautiful gift with Mother's Day coming up as well. It's really just around the corner whether it's something you purchase for yourself or if you're purchasing it for a loved one. So yeah I will as I said I'll have all those details down below. Now I want to run through some tips on what to look out for when purchasing responsible fine jewelry for less and the first thing I want to touch on are the materials. Now if you are looking at fast fashion retail stores quite often they're going to be selling jewelry pieces that have a brass base and then they're flash plated with gold or silver. So what will happen is that the more that you wear them that flash plating is going to wear off and it will reveal the brass underneath which will discolor your fingers so they'll end up looking blue or green. I'm sure you've probably had that experience. I know I have over the years and it doesn't look very nice um, and it can take a little while to sort of wash that off your hand. So that's the reason why that occurs because it has this oxidizing effect on your skin. 
So what I would recommend doing is looking for jewelry pieces which are sterling silver base and then they're plated with gold, gold vermeil or silver. Those are going to be much higher quality, they're going to be much more longer lasting which I think if you're shopping responsibly for your fine jewelry then that's sort of what you're aiming for. Another thing I would recommend doing is seeing if you can find out how thick the gold plating is. If it's around 2.5 microns and this is approximately five times thicker than regular gold plating so you know that it's really going to be built to last. Recycled gold is an amazing option as it limits the environmental impact by using zero new materials and it also saves materials from industry waste so I think that's really incredible. In addition to that I'd recommend looking for lab grown diamonds as I've mentioned already. Chemically, physically and optically they look exactly the same. You're still going to get that exact same sparkle, clarity and aesthetic but it is lab grown as opposed to being mined from the earth so you're reducing the impact on our environment that way as well. Well. So my next tip around shopping responsibly for fine jewelry would be to look at production. So are they paying fair wages to their staff and do they have fair working conditions? The other thing would be around the type of packaging that they're using. So are they using FSC certified materials? Are they using cardboard packaging? I know it might not feel as luxurious however ultimately when you think about it that packaging is either going to sit in the back of your wardrobe or it's going to go in the bin. So having something that is easy to recycle or reuse in some way I think is ideal and that's one of the things I love about the linear boxes is that they still look and feel luxurious because they're a really high quality card however they're recyclable so if you feel that you don't have a need for the box you can easily uh, dispose of it in an environmentally friendly way. The other thing I would say to look out for is to see whether they're giving back to any charities or if they're offsetting their carbon emissions uh, which I think is a really important thing especially uh, today uh, as we really want to reduce our environmental impact. The final one's probably a little bit of a no-brainer but I would say when shopping responsibly for fine jewelry you also want to be really mindful about the purchases that you make. I do think this is probably something that just goes hand in hand when shopping for fine jewelry in general just as it tends to have a slightly higher price point so it could be something that you see yourself as as sort of splurging on or it's a bit of a bigger ticket item when it comes to adding anything to your wardrobe but just something that I thought I would mention as I do believe that it's a consideration and uh, when you are kind of building a curated wardrobe or you're trying to be mindful about what you buy then that is obviously a really important step. Now I want to talk about some tips when it comes to styling fine jewelry and the first one is to layer your necklaces. I think this is a really fun way to add visual interest around your neckline especially if you're wearing a very simple outfit. So if you've got on a plain white tee then this is a way that you can really jazz things up and what I like to do is layer no more than three necklaces and I will try and use chains which are different shapes or sizes so slightly different thicknesses and I will always put the necklace that I want to be the key focus at the very bottom of the stack so it's going to be on the longest chain. You can kind of see this with what I've done in the cutaways. My second tip would be to stack your rings and I absolutely love doing this. I feel like rings are one of my favorite jewelry pieces to wear just because we are moving our hands so much so if you're wearing something sparkly it's going to catch the light in the most beautiful and dazzling way and it is just a really interesting way to kind of play with your jewelry. So what I would recommend doing is mixing different types of gemstones, mixing again the thickness of the bands that you're wearing, mixing gemstones with uh, plain gold bands, uh, just different styles as well and you can really have a lot of fun with it. You'll see what I did in the cutaways. I think that the overall look was really really cool and it's just it's just such a fun way to uh, play around with your style. So my next tip would be to opt for a statement piece and I really wanted to highlight this one because I know many of us are working from home, we're participating in Zoom calls where our colleagues are only seeing us from kind of the shoulders up. So our face is really the focus of these calls and for that reason I really love a statement earring. I think that it's a really fun way to kind of show your personality a little bit and jazz up your outfit, feel a little bit fresh and vibrant without really putting in too much effort. The pair that I'm wearing today, uh, these are from Linnea, all the jewelry aside from my wedding bands is actually. Um, 
and I love the shape of them. I think it's really unusual, but still feels quite elegant and something that I, you know, I'm not going to get tired of. Um, I especially love pearl earrings too. Again, I think very feminine sort of a detail. So those are kind of the statement piece that I'm wearing today. And I've opted to wear much finer jewelry pieces everywhere else so that they remain the focus of my outfit. So you can kind of see, um, and it's a little bit obscured by my microphone, but I do have a fine chain necklace on. This is the Lechner's necklace from Linnea. And then I've just gone for, on my fingers, some very fine rings. And I could really pair those back if I wanted to, but I don't feel like they're competing much with the earrings. And those are sort of the focal piece. If I was wearing a really chunky necklace, I would opt for a slightly smaller or more delicate earring choice. Maybe those diamond studs, which I showed you earlier. Um, and again, I would just keep my rings and also bracelets and things quite minimal too. And kind of as a follow on from that, is to know when to stop. While I absolutely love adorning myself in jewelry and I think it is so much fun to play with, when you have those more focal elements, so a really chunky earring or a chunky necklace or something like that, then you want to make sure that everything else is really complementary and it doesn't detract or take away from those elements. So it's probably one of the reasons why you quite often see me wearing just a watch on my wrist as opposed to any other jewelry because I feel like that extra adornment is just a step too far. And again, with my rings, quite often I'm just wearing a handful. I don't really have too many on. So I'm kind of focused a little bit more on either my earrings or on my necklace. The next thing to consider is whether your jewelry or your outfit is the focus. So if you're wearing a really simple, plain, minimal outfit then it can really be enhanced and taken up a notch by some beautiful jewelry and that's one of the reasons why I like to layer necklaces why I like to opt for um, really beautiful rings or earrings because most of my outfits tend to be quite plain and they really need a little bit of help to just lift them up slightly on the opposite end of the spectrum if you're wearing a really bold loud outfit then that is kind of going to be the key piece that you're wearing that is sort of the story that you're telling and you want your jewelry to complement it so they're going to be a little bit more of a subtle element for your overall outfit. So you think of what you're wearing as the main dish and then your jewelry would be the accompaniments or the side dishes that you have. So you're kind of nibbling away at them a little bit, but the thing you're really focused on is your main. <laughs> Final tip I wanted to share is not to be a slave to trends. So instead of focusing on what is in at the moment, think more about what's going to work best with your coloring, with your frame and with your personal style. I like to be just as considered with the jewelry pieces that I'm buying as with the clothing that I add to my wardrobe. I am thinking about the big picture here, so longevity. And the other thing is that when I've had a jewelry piece in my wardrobe for a really long time, every single time that I wear it, I associate it with so many positive and happy memories. And it just is a reason to wear it more. It kind of gives me those feel good vibes. And that's definitely something I want out of my jewelry too. So those are all the tips I wanted to share on styling fine jewelry, as well as how to purchase fine jewelry responsibly. I hope that you found this video useful and interesting and I want to say thank you to Linya for partnering with me on it. As I mentioned at the start of the video, Linya's new Lab Grown Diamond collection really is just incredibly beautiful, so sparkly and I love how classic and minimal all of the styles are and they really would just make the perfect gift. So I will have that link down below where you can go and check it out for yourself. But thank you so much for watching, for spending some of your day with me and I will see you on Monday with a brand new video. See you soon! Bye.